The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9. The Israelites confess their sins. On the 24th day of the same month, the Israelites gathered together, fasting and wearing sackcloth and putting dust on their heads. Those of Israelites' descendants had separated themselves from all foreigners. They stood in their places and confessed their sins and the sins of their ancestors. They stood where they were and read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for a quarter of the day and spent another quarter in confession and in worshiping the Lord their God. Standing on the stairs of the Levites were Jeshua, Banai, Kadmiel, Shembaniah, Buni, Sherebiah, Banai, and Kenani. They cried out with loud voices to the Lord, their God. And the Levites, Jeshua, Kadmiel, Banai, Hashabiniah, Sherebiah, Hodiah, Shebaniah, and Pethahiah said, Stand up and praise the Lord your God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything and the uh, multitudes of heaven worship you. You are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and named him Abraham. You, brought, uh, you found his heart faithful to you and you made a covenant with him to give to his descendants the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Jebusites, and Gergashites. You have kept your promise because you are righteous. You saw the suffering of your ancestors in Egypt. You heard their cry at the Red Sea. You sent signs and wonders against Pharaoh against all his officials and all the people of his land, for you knew how arrogantly the Egyptians treated them. You made a name for yourself, which remains to this day. You divided the sea before them, so that they passed through it on dry ground. But you hurled their pursuers into the depths, like a stone into mighty waters. By day you led them with a pillar of cloud, and by night with a pillar of fire to give them light on the way they were to take. You came down on Mount Sinai, you spoke to them from heaven, you gave them regulations and laws that are just and right, and decrees and commands that are good. You made known to them your holy Sabbath and gave them commands decrees and laws through your servant Moses. In their hunger, you gave them bread from heaven, and in their thirst, you brought them water from the rock. You told them to go in and take possession of the land you had sworn with uplifted hand to give them. But they, our ancestors, became arrogant and stiff-necked, and they did not obey your commands. They refused to listen and failed to remember the miracles you performed among them. They became stiff-necked and in their rebellion among appoint a leader in order to return to their slavery. But you are a forgiving God, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Therefore, you did not desert them even when they cast for themselves an image of a calf and said, This is your God who brought you up out of Egypt, or when they committed awful blasphemies. Because of your great compassion, 
you did not abandon them in the wilderness. By day, the pillar of cloud did not fail to guide them on their path, nor the pillar of fire by night to shine on the way they were to take. You gave your good spirit to instruct them. You did not withhold your manna from their mouths, and you gave them water for their thirst. For 30, 40 years, you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, nor did their feet become swollen. You gave them kingdoms and nations, allotting to them even the remotest frontiers. They took over the country of Sihon, king of Heshbon, and the country of Og, king of Bashan. You made their children as numerous as the stars in the sky, and you brought them into the land that you told their parents to enter the possession, possess. Their children went, and the, uh, their children went in and took possession of the land. You subdued before them the Canaanites who lived in the land. You gave the Canaanites into their hands, along with their kings and the peoples of the land, to deal with them as they pleased. They captured fortified cities and fertile land. land. They took possession of the uh, they took possession of houses filled with all kinds of good things, wells already dug, vineyards, olive groves, and fruit trees in abundance. They ate to the full and were well nourished. They reveled, reveled in your great goodness. But they were disobedient and rebelled against you. They turned their backs on your law. They killed your prophets who had warned them in order to turn them back to you. They committed awful blasphemies. So you delivered them into the hands of their enemies who oppressed them. But when they were oppressed, they cried out to you from heaven. You heard them and in your great compassion, you gave them deliverers who rescued them from the hand of their enemies. But as soon as they were at rest, they again did what was evil in your sight. Then you abandoned them to the hand of their enemies so that they ruled over them. And when they cried out to you again, you heard from heaven and in your compassion, you delivered them time after time. You warned them in order to turn them back to your law, but they became arrogant and disobeyed your commands. They sinned against your ordinances of which you said, the person who obeys them will live by them. Stubbornly, they turned their backs on you, became stiff-necked and refused to listen. For many years, you were patient with them. By your spirit, you warned them through your prophets. Yet, they paid no attention. You gave them into the hands of the neighboring peoples. But in your great mercy, you did not put, in, put an end to them or abandon them. For you are a gracious and merciful God. Now, therefore, our God, the great God, mighty and awesome, who keeps his covenant of love, do not let all this hardship seem trifling in your eyes. The hardship that has come on us, on our kings and leaders, on our priests and prophets, on our ancestors and all your people, from the days of the kings of Assyria until today, in all that has happened to us, you have remained righteous. You have acted faithfully while we acted wickedly. Our kings, our leaders, our priests, and our ancestors did not follow your law. They did not pay attention to your commands or the statutes you warned them to keep. Even while there they were in their kingdom, enjoying your great goodness to them in the spacious and fertile land you gave them, they did not serve you or turn from their evil ways. But see, we are slaves today, slaves in the land you gave our ancestors so they could eat its fruit and the other good things it produces. 
because of our sins it is abundant harvest its abundant harvest goes to the kings you have placed over us they rule over our bodies and our cattle as they please we are in great distress the agreement of the people in view of all this we are making a binding agreement putting it in writing and our leaders our levites and our priests are affixing their seals to it. Chapter 10. Those who sealed it were Nehemiah, the governor, the son of Hakaliah, Zedekiah, Seraiah, Azariah, Jeremiah, Pashur, Amariah, Malkijah, Hatush, Shebaniah, Maluk, Harim, Meremoth, Obadiah, Daniel, Kenethon, Jinnathon, Baruch, Meshulam, Abijah, Mijamin, Maziah, Bilgai, and Shemaiah. These were the priests, the Levites, Joshua, son of Azaniah, Binui, of the son of Hanadad, Kadmiel, and their associates, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Kelita, Peliah, Hanan, Mika, Rehob, Hashabiah, Zakur, Sherebiah, Shebaniah, Odiah, Hodiah, Bani, and Beninu, the leaders of the people, Parosh, Pahath, Moab, Elam, Zatu, Banai, Buni, Asgad, Bebai, Adonijah, Bikvai, Adin, Ater, Hezekiah, Atsur, Hodia, Hashum, Bezai, Harif, Anatoth, Nebai, Magpasha, Magpiash, Meshulam, Hezir, Meshezabel, Zadok, Jadua, Pelatia, Hanan, Anaya, Hoshia, Hananaya, Hashub, Halohesh, Pilha, Shobek, Rehum, Hashabna, Masaya, Ahia, Hanan, Anan, Maluk, Harim, and Bana. The rest of the people, priests, Levites, gatekeepers, musicians, temple servants, and all who served separated themselves from the neighboring peoples for the sake of the law of God, together with their wives and all their sons and daughters who are able to understand. All these now join their fellow Israelites, the nobles, and find, bind themselves with a curse and an oath to follow the law of God given through Moses, <clears throat> the servant of God, and to obey carefully all the commands, regulations, and decrees of the Lord our God. We promise not to give our daughters in marriage to the peoples around us to take their daughters for our sons. When the neighboring peoples bring merchandise or grain to sell on the Sabbath, we will not buy from them on the Sabbath or on any holy day. Every seventh year, we will forego working on the land and will cancel all debts. We assume the responsibility for carrying out the commands to give a third of a shekel each year for the service of the house of our God, for the bread set out on the table, for the regular grain offerings and burnt offerings, for the offerings on the Sabbath, at the new moon feasts, and at the appointed festivals, for the holy offerings, for sin offerings to make atonement for Israel and for all the duties of the house of our God. We, the priests, the Levites and the people have cast lots to determine when each of our families is, bring, is to bring to the house of our God at set times each year a contribution of wood 
to burn on the altar of the Lord our God as it is written in the law. We also assume responsibility for bringing to the house of the Lord each year the first fruit of our crops and of every fruit tree. As it is also written in the law, we will bring the firstborn of our sons and our cattle, of our herds and of our flocks to the house of our God, to the priest ministering there. Moreover, we will bring to the storeroom of the house of our God to priests the first of our ground meal, of our grain offerings, of the fruit of all our trees and our new wine and olive oil. And we will bring a tithe of our crops to the Levites, for it is the Levites who collect the tithes in all the towns where we work. A priest descended from Aaron is to accompany the Levites when they receive the tithes. And the Levites are to bring a tenth of the tithes up to the house of our God, to the storerooms of the treasury. The people of Israel, including the Levites, are to bring their contributions of grain, new wine, and olive oil to the storerooms where the articles for the sanctuary and for the ministering priests, the gatekeepers, and the musicians are also kept. We will not neglect the house of our God. Chapter 11, the new residence of Jerusalem. Now, leaders of the, the leaders of the people settled in Jerusalem. The rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of every ten of them to live in Jerusalem, the holy city, while the remaining nine were to stay in their own towns. The people commanded all who volunteered to live in Jerusalem. These are the provincial leaders who settled in Jerusalem. Now some Israelites, priests, Levites, temple servants, and descendants of Solomon's servants lived in the towns of Judah, each on their own property in the various towns, while other people from both Judah and Benjamin lived in Jerusalem. From the descendants of Judah, Athiah son of Uzziah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Mahlale, a descendant of Perez, and Masaiah, son of Baruch, the son of Kolhose, the son of Haziah, the son of Adiah, the son of Joiarib, the son of Zechariah, the descendant of Shila. The descendants of Perez, who lived in Jerusalem, totaled 468 men of standing. From the descendants of Benjamin, Salu, son of Meshulam, the son of Joed, the son of Pediah, the son of Kolaya, the son of Masaya, the son of Itiel, the son of Jeshaya, and his followers Gabai and Shalai, 928 men. Joel, son of Zikri, was their chief officer, and Judah, son of Hasenuah, was over the new quarter of the city. From the priests, Jediah, son of Joyarib, Jakin, Seraiah, son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Merayoth, the son of Ahitub, the official in charge of the house of God, and their associates who carried on work for their temple, 822 men. Adaiah, son of Jero Jeroham, the son of Peliah, the son of Amzi, the son of Zechariah, the son of Pashur, the son of Malkija, and the associates who were heads of families, 242 men. Amashai, son of Azarel, the son of Ahziah, the son of Meshilemoth, the son of Imer, and his associates, who were men of standing, 128. The, their chief officer was Zabdiel, son of Hagedolim, from the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashbu, Hashub, 
the son of Azrikam, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Buni, Shabetai, and Josabad, two of the heads of the Levites, who had charge of the outside work of the house of God, Mataniah, son of Mika, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asav, the director who led in thanksgiving and prayer, Bakbukaya, son of uh, second among his associates, and Abda, son of Shamua, the son of Galal, the son of Jedusun, the Levites in the holy city, totaled 284. The gatekeepers, Akub, Talmon, and their associates who kept watch at the gates, 172 men. The rest of the Israelites with the priests and Levites were in all the towns of Judah, each on their ancestral property. The temple servants lived on the hill of Ophel and Ziha and Gishpa were in charge of them. The chief officer of the Levites in the Jerusalem was Utsi, son of Bani, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Mika. Utsi was one of Asaph's descendants, who were the musicians responsible for the service of the house of God. The musicians were under the king's orders, which regulated their daily activity. Pesehiah, the son, uh, Pesehiah, son of Mesheba, uh, Meshezabel, one of the descendants of Zira, son of Judah, was the king's agent in all affairs relating to the people. As for the villages with their fields, some of the people of Judah lived in Keriraya, Arba, and its surrounding settlements in Diban, and its settlements in Jekabizil and its villages, in Jeshua, in Molada, in Beth Pelet, in Hazar Shual, in Bir Sheba and its settlement, in Ziklag, in Mekonah and its settlements, in Enrimon, in Zora, in Jarmuth, Zanoa, Adullam, and their villages, in Lakish and its fields, and in Azekah and its settlements, so they were living in all the way from Beersheba to the valley of Hinnom. The descendants of the Benjamites from Geba lived in Mikmash, Aija, Bethel, and its settlements, in Anathoth, Nob, and Ananiah, in Hazor, Rama, and Gitaim in Hadid, Ziboim and Nebalat in Lod and Ono and in Geharashim. Some of the divisions of their Levites of Judah settled in Benjamin. Amen.